morning, and uh, we're going to get started with this morning, and we we're just happy that all of you are able to join us, but we're, we're really excited and happy that Reverend Jesse Jackson has taken time out today to come out and visit with us. It's always great to stand behind history, and uh, Reverend Jackson has uh, been very, very uh, helpful in dealing with voter registration, education, and voting, uh, just the, the voting rights and economic development that we constantly are working Throughout the 2022 legislative session, members of the Black Caucus have been working diligently to impact change within our community and for our constituents. Members of the Black Caucus have provided a voice of equity and justice throughout the development of and policy. In the face of vast opposition, the caucus has stood firm in the beliefs and principles of raising the quality of life for African Americans and the indigent and the working people throughout legislation, education, and economic development. In doing this, the various works done during this session has further established the Black Caucus goals, ranging from the issues of violence, voter education, employment, and others that impact other things that impact lives of African Americans throughout the state of Louisiana. Members of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus have been putting in major work during this legislative session, as you all are aware. And today we're happy to have an individual who has definitely worked diligently on the many causes of the rights of African Americans and voter registration as well as uh, economic development for people that we, we all represent. And today we have our Most Reverend Jesse Jackson. Reverend, thank you very much, sir, and all the listeners for the other day. Proof to be with you today. I am uh, in part because I have a granddaughter graduating tomorrow from Tulane. Amen. Big deal, guys. Say amen. amen. Another graduate from UCLA next week. Another one with A and T, Oklahoma mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. Let me express my concern here that today, when we push on to coalesce with the Congressional Black Caucus, say the other uh, elements of uh, interest of people, uh, we are facing the most severe battle we face in a century. Two important years of slavery, two important years of slavery, the Emancipation Proclamation. The federal government had to intervene to protect our rights. So many years they did just that, from states' rights. And Jefferson Davis, all of that Jefferson Davis meant to slavery, secession, against sedition, and white supremacy. Now, Trump has picked up the mantle of Jefferson Davis and Bill Bow. There's a, a definite kind of revolution in the South now against rights gained through blood and death. 40 years ago. The concern now is that we look at fighting for democracy in Ukraine, so they're cutting it against democracy at home. The billions there and almost nothing here. We look at the black population in this state, around an Asian, American blacks are 8,000, American on the rest 35,000, he's on the rest 16,000. Um, all minorities are under 70,000. It's not just a black issue, however. Our rate in the state is 19.6%. One of every five residents in Louisiana lives in poverty, working poor people. And 87,500 of our residents live in poverty, working poverty. Twice more unemployed, unregistered whites, and now blacks, browns, and Asians are unregistered. So we find ourselves working poor people. The few people that have too much, I mean, they have almost nothing. Just left, just left uh, Arkansas. We just sign things yet to come here. The impact of uh, placement legislation, uh, de facto racial segregation legislation. In a very big case of white people in the same class who more, who more, more manipulated than blacks are, these schemes. We made progress in 1865 and the Supreme Court moved to take away our rights. The state's rights took over, it took in 1954, 50 years to, to regain. There's now an attempt to, to, re, to revive the 1986 decision. The Supreme Court moved on women's right to choose their option of their bodies. It's a hell of a decision. It's made. Um, 
for the grown people. See, we women have the right to vote in the same time. So called superior, inferior sex. So the white women might be just off on, on slavery. The blacks were third class citizens, the whites were. The women were second class citizens. The right to vote in 1920. The white women got the right to vote. Because the black is after slavery had ended. You see, they moved on white rights to vote today. Following strict construction rules, that's what Clarence Thomas and Lilo represents, all the way to fall forward with the end. Who has the power to take the right to vote back again? Using this scheme to, in fact, undercut the right to vote. So that's for Louisiana, uh, Arkansas, where people have to drive 30 miles on the vote. And the vote is not stationary. It moves from place to place. It may go 30 miles to vote, and then it's a polling place to move. It's not stationary. The right to vote is under attack. We lost through blood has been cut out through pens and computers. But racial lines are, are glaring there and they're glaring here. Same pattern is taking place across the South today. We, we must protest with something about it in a mighty way. Challenge the Supreme Court is every level there. Every state must challenge it. Um, look at the violence. There's too much violence in the, too much violence in the country. Thirteen shot, ten dead in Buffalo. Uh, we need to be disarming those Americans who want to brandish. Some of them, these weapons can bring down airplanes. They take on the U.S. Congress, they, they, they will bring down airplanes. We're, we're waiting for that 10 may be a moment. I think that may be it. it is, they're so angry, they're so confused. Behind the walls are ignorance, separate ignorance. Fear, hatred, and violence, ignorance, fear, hatred, and violence. Walls are coming in, all of the LSU. Now, you black athletes attract money, prestige, and power. The parents don't have the right to vote. Grandparents don't have the right to vote. They protect the right to vote. And push wants to get every high school senior. Go say the diploma in one hand, the vote card in the other. Raise our youth while they're young. They must know what precinct they're in. Save rep clubs, say senators are. They must know council people. They must know county kind of commissioners. They must have an understanding of, of the system. They've been politically. Also they, must, they must also learn conflict resolution. Resolve conflict without fighting back in, 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 in violent ways. The stock market game, they must learn the capital, how to, how to engage in capital development. Not by a grant, but by understanding how the stock market works in America. The stock market page is not the wrapping fish, it's a very serious page of work. You come out of high school, you should know that. You should make city colleges free. And it's two and two, you go to city colleges two years. You go to colleges two years, you cut the student loan dead in half. But that's a piece of our work right now. Getting them to register to vote. Many, many blacks are unregistered, the same is unregistered because they can't read not write. They, they, they're just sitting there, my grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother's not going to vote for me. Because not because she didn't love me, she couldn't read not write. She never went on time to make an X and feel a sense of degradation. So the youth who get registered must accept the burden of registering their parents, their parents to vote. But the, the, the wheel of injustice are turning rapidly very fast today. Uh, poverty in Louisiana is, is striking. 90% of the population here is, is, is poverty. One of our five residents in Louisiana lives in poverty. Eight hundred seven thousand people in poverty in this state. One eighth in poverty is 1960 rankings by state. Louisiana is 14.6%. Half of the Louisiana children live in poverty. They're not fully grown and developed. They don't have uh, meals. They don't have education. Healthcare, that's so much of our work today. We have to go back to the streets in a big way. I'm going to do the best of that. So that people know that the, the America we've envisioned the last 45 years is not in jeopardy again. 
Uh, and many people are too passive in the face of it. We must fight back vigorously to protect the right to vote. When the vote, everything else flows. We're in the fourth stage of our struggle now. Stage one was against legal slavery, 246 years. And Jim Crow after 65 years. Now the, the, the right to vote, 45 years now, access to capital. When we have a city of crime, access to capital, you can't grow. Mm -hmm. You can preside over other people's wealth. We must, we must use that, the, the lending and investment policy of our country. Let's be real. I want to express my thanks to the call for members for gathering today. As we look at what we're looking at here, this is a, a down little period. Uh, as we look at the unregistered scripture that comes to mind, that we mark out as it says, it to us, is the um, idea of the law, the law sheet. Jesus was lost his events if he had the law sheet. Those who are arrested, the vote, getting get results, the found sheet. There's a lot of more lost than they are found. You know, you look at them, everything else is lost. We're, as we just remember, there's a southern crusade across the south again. A hundred thousand new voters on the books in this state will change the politics, will change the culture. Will change that culture. We're, we're not doing a good job on voter registration. Those who are, are elected are, are found. Most of them tend to get re-elected based on those who voted them the last time. There must be a renewed struggle for the Voting Rights Act. And I looked at uh, the, the data across the South on voting uh, displacement, the drawing of lines, the dis displacement, the replacement displacement, cutting across racial lines and half the people and the House and I will not be here in 10 years. That's a, a strange stop. Today, if they would make another pleasant decision, we would be helpless to stop it. Today, we're facing a, uh, a level of political power invested in, in the Supreme Court. It is it's a political, political court. It's always political. And you can have no rights, blacks, Whites bound to respect us for the political decision. Slavery. The 1896 decision was political, uh, separate, but unequal. The decision in, in light of post World War II blacks rebelling for freedom. We had uh, not long ago uh, the Jack's birthday, Jack Robson's birthday. Uh, 25 years after he played, the baby was not going to recognize him. We protested, and we recognized Jackie. He went to Cincinnati and said, well, 25 years later, it's not black to a base coach yet. What's untold story about Jackie's story is that he signed a, a, a deal with Branch Rickey, not, not protest in three years. He's on the field, uh, protest with, through the press. Took it, took it to the chest. He was the first baseman, he had to move second base. Spokesman. He was hit. He was hit by balls most times in one year, and then how league had the year before. <coughs> he suffered. The team was south. He had the same people's houses. Other teams, stayed in the hotel. On the field, they did a petition to uh, not go on the field. They broke it up. Dixon Walker said, "Jackie, you four for four. You had the you, they, they, boy. You done pretty good. You're still a nigger." He suffered that kind of abuse for three years. And uh, you know the only thing about it is the hits, runs, and errors. But he took the abuse and laid the groundwork for it. And then if you see the days all oh, about Jackie Robinson. It's, it's the success of Jackie Robinson in 57. The NFL is bringing the blame back in 48. They've been banned from the NFL for 15 years. No, no, no all American could be drafted. Kenny, Kenny um, Washington, Jack Robinson's mate in football, number one in the other, so the press could not be drafted. But they took that hit. In basketball, in 1950, blacks came back again. Uh, really, um, big man for baseball, football, and basketball, 47, 48, 49. And the Globe Trotters, clowns of basketball, played there, and then after Lakers twice. 
beat them twice. I wanted to beat the best fights I had to offer. Then came uh, uh, Earl Lord, 1950 Syracuse Nationals. That, uh, we, the athletics have been advanced by politics for a long time. And the LSU played the Alabama in the big game this year. You see black and white kids on that football field. And the uniform color, not skin color, that's the progress we made. Because they're playing on the football field, their parents came from the home, there's something wrong with that picture. The same sense of joy we have across the lines of race and gender and religion. Football field must be in, in daily life. Why is football players, basketball players, who are the best in us? Uh, I, last week I saw the Golden State play um, the Grizzlies in the Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama, of course, for the Grizzlies. We went and ran against the Golden State. The laws, when the game was over, the players hugged, they embraced. Because why? Because the winners lose with dignity. The winners win with grace. So it's a playing field. The rules made it possible. The playing field is evil. <coughs> Who the public goes to the river fast, goes transparent. You can hear the points where you can accept the winner and the loser. Thank you, even who the public goes to the river fast, goes transparent. We can win. That must happen in politics. There's no reason why somebody black should not be able to run for governor and say they win. Qualified well, people on this caucus, the U.S. Senator, and win. Why should you have five, one of every five children in the state of poverty? Your sons are fighting against poverty, it's fighting for poverty, it's fighting against working wages. State school is doing out to all the rich and have so many poor people. That means that they're representing those who invest in them, not, not investing in the people. It's time for a change. We really realize the American dream. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, look, we'd like to thank everyone for coming out this morning. Uh, we want to thank definitely uh, Reverend Jackson for being with us uh, and sharing such inspiring words as we continue to deal with our many challenges. Uh, we just would like to thank him for being here. And again, uh, we appreciate you your being with the caucus and spending some time with us this morning. I mean, the press is, is, a, is a data you need. You don't have this data. And the press is important if you use this data. We were covering... Uh, of the relevant tri trivial stuff. So Carlson, Fox, Fox News, the level of journalism is endangering the whole nation. What happened in Buffalo is uh, 197 mass shootings this year. This is a, just a, an incident that more did the killing. So the loading has dropped is gone. The black has been shot down in cold blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no doubt about that. When the guy killed nine people in Charleston, he went, took, took him on arrest. Some of the hamburgers, the hamburgers, and both were burger came from jail. But he didn't turn himself in. Like that like should, should have happened. So he went to the rules. We, we should take up all these same old man weapons, should be illegal. Take them up. And as far as the, he didn't happen, Racism is, 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 is uh, unscientific, no superior race, it's immoral, it's ungodly, it's a sin, skin worship and skin adultery is mental illness. Those who argue, argue about rights to carry guns openly and uh, stand your ground are mentally ill, they're sick people, a nation deserves a dose of health. Next. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thanks again. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Reverend, for being here. Well, do a lot of talking. Help me. Just say something yeah. now. Talk to me. Anybody has any questions for Reverend? Yes, ma'am. Sir, are you in favor of the paper? So what, what would you suggest would be the best way to combat some of the voter registration issues and the census data issues that we've seen in recent years? I think each state must go back to the Supreme Court and challenges to make a decision over and over again. You must make a decision. You look at the, the voting patterns, 
Let me rewrite the, 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 the states' rights again. We made progress in 1865 when federal protection was 1896. Uh, when Dr. King spoke in 1960, there was one black official in the whole South. Joe Johnson was from Georgia, one in the whole South. He took it systematically moved us off. Today, if they're successful, they'll cut the black caucus in half. There were that was five black caucus when he spoke that day. There's six to now, four or five Latinos. This court is coming out to all of them. The, every the listen in this room must, must work. I'm in a in your district. We must protest, protest loudly. Streets and streets in every courthouse. Sound must be filled, must go back to the streets again. We have, we have no choice. You know, you're not be placid and cool by this. You'll be cool and un unemployed. Uh, field, field, field is an outstanding congressman. Growing in strength. It, it drew, it drew out, out, out of the country with the lines. It's true, drew him out, gerrymandering. The Jewish gerrymandering is, is not good for America. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's un American. Not right. And this court is. If they make a decision, if they move on white women, they move on black men. The bold, audacious court. We, we deserve better. All right. Thank you all, and thank you all again for coming.